All right, so here's the, uh, the magical box. The magical box. <laughs> and um, here we're down to the last. Please tell me you're lights. joking. Please tell me you're joking. You have one patch left. No, it's, it's never good to get to that point. This little square is a hormone patch. Estradot is by far the most preferred brand for menopausal women. And so this is basically an adhesive patch that you place on your lower abdomen and it gives you all the, <laughs> all the good estrogen to your body. It changes everything. It does. Right now, Estradot is suffering from a global shortage and New Zealand's no exception. It's amazing the anxiety that you feel when you are solely reliant on a little square where supply is dwindling. What's your process been when you're trying to track Estradot down? What do you do? What I have found has, that has been the most effective is actually going into pharmacies. Letting them see your desperation. And them see this desperate face. Yes, I'm going to hot flush in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> While the average age for menopause is 51, in many cases women much younger suffer from early menopause. So I was 33 when symptoms initially started, but I was diagnosed at age 34. The first symptom was my cycle went irregular, uh -huh. and then that was followed by anxiety that came out of nowhere, and then um, extreme fatigue and heart palpitations, which were pretty scary. 34 years old, a young family, it was a lot to take in. One of the worst parts about it was I had this feeling as though I'd lost myself. This is something that I don't tell that many people, only the close people in my life know this, but um, in the toughest parts of the journey before I had started HRT, I would regularly think, I think my family would be better off without me around. And, um, and it, it makes me emotional every time I think about that because I know that's not true now. It's a pretty desperate headspace to be in. Yeah. Um, a it's a park. We're yeah, making a park. A park. No, it's a park. It's a park. May the force be with you. Thank you. Jenna tries her luck at the first pharmacy she sees to pick up her Estradot prescription. No luck. No luck. So I think we're just going to have to try and find somewhere else. Yep. For Jenna, taking hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, was the game changer. Tell me about the first time you started using the patches. I noticed more and more improvements in how I felt in my energy and um, my mental health and my heart palpitations stopped completely. I actually still do feel emotional every time I put on a patch because I'm just aware of what my life could be like without it. All right, another chemist. How are you feeling about this one? Are we feeling good? Yep, there's always hope until it's dashed. Ah! Yeah, so that was a no. All right, well, we've got one, one and last chemist to go. Have you had luck at this chemist before? I mean, some months they have it and some months they don't. Right. So it really does kind of feel like a gamble on whether it will come in. Hi. It's a gamble Jenna has no choice but to take. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Got it. Yes. Um, double checking. We trust you. This is the good stuff. Yes. <laughs> Mike's been a pharmacist for four decades. In the past three to four years, he's seen a big increase in women coming in for HRT. So, how does this work from the pharmacist's perspective? What's the process getting hold of Estradol? We are only allowed to order five packets a week huh? of any particular strength <laughs> right. when they're available. So in our pharmacy, that might only last a day.
happens when you gather a gaggle of menopausal women on a picturesque hilltop in Hawke's Bay? Well, you get lots and lots of this. Suddenly, like, I'm hearing menopause stories, hot flushes, like, in the matter of ten minutes. It's amazing. It's so entering into perimenopause and menopause for a lot of women is a really awful and challenging and difficult time of our lives. Mm. It was just this gut feeling that something was wrong. Yeah. But it took an absolute flat line last year for me to kind of go, huh. Oh. I find it very frustrating that the health system does not value women's health. You know what? You can do this. With HRT or not, but it's hormones, you're not crazy. What would you say were your worst symptoms? To be perfectly honest, Kate, every symptom that I've read about, I've had. Symptoms like insomnia, anxiety, body pains, heart palpitations, and a loss of motivation and confidence. My body was a mind sorry, it was, it was a mind when I started going through perimenopause. It was sending me signals that I had no idea on how to actually decipher, and as a, what I called together woman, I had no idea what was happening. So, let's talk about sex. Well, lack of sex, to be precise. I had no libido. And, was it uh, overnight, no libido? Like, overnight. Right. You know, everything was working up here, but nothing down there. Right. And, um, and I couldn't even go into actress mode because my body wouldn't come with me. Um, until... I met my best friend, yeah. um, Miss HRT. Yeah, man. Watch out, Johnny. I'm coming for you. <laughs> From the bedroom to the boardroom, menopause has been robbing women of their mana and their mojo. Sarah owns a successful international education consultancy. It's a powerhouse career and she loves it. I was at a point where I couldn't work. I'm a very active, healthy person. I couldn't exercise. I could barely get out of bed um, without crying, without disconnecting from everyone around me. And the thought of having to then step in front of, you know, 100 people to speak, it just it wouldn't have happened. Last year, these wahine, spearheaded by community GP and human dynamo, Dr Samantha Newman, successfully lobbied Pharmac for free access to HRT medication, progesterone. My primary concern, having gone through this journey myself, is how do we make this support accessible to all women in New Zealand? But accessing help, that's one thing. Getting help and being heard, that can be quite another. I find it frustrating for women who are walking into perimenopause and menopause, that phase of their life, that they often have to speak to multiple GPs before they land with a GP who has knowledge about the, the hormonal journey. It took another three male GPs before I went private to get someone to listen, and when they listened, I cried because I thought, I'm not mad, I'm not this wacky woman. And what a lot of these not mad, not wacky women have found is the most helpful is HRT, hormone replacement therapy patches. Been on the patches for probably three weeks. Four weeks. And I'm, I'm pretty good. Cool. I'm pretty cool, eh? I think you're <laughs> She's so nice. Oh, I'm so a goddess now. GPs who don't know enough about menopause right now watching this, I mean, what have you got to say to them? Half their patients will be women, probably. All those women are going to go through menopause. I just think it's not a topic you can avoid. Stella Milsom is an endocrinologist and she's one of the country's leading voices on all things menopause. In 2023, if you're healthy and you look very healthy to me, Kate, and you've got menopausal symptoms that affect your quality of life, mm -hmm. Option number one is hormones. It's not antidepressants, it's not clonidine, it's not gabapentin, it's not being told to go and practice yoga or go to an acupuncturist or to take herbs or do something else relatively dodgy. Hormone replacement therapy is now considered a key treatment for menopause. In the early 2000s, a study found that it caused harm. And although that study is now widely debunked, the fallout is still affecting how women can get access to the treatment now. 
Everyone was frightened, women, mm. women were frightened, doctors were frightened. And then what happened is it wasn't taught in medical school, it wasn't taught in postgraduate courses. Um, and so we've now had a decade or so of health professionals who actually have not been educated in the menopause situation in general. This, coupled with a health workforce crisis, has meant that a woman's menopause journey can be dependent on which GP happens to turn up on the day. We've got a real shortage of, of um, experienced general practitioners. Then we've got the level of knowledge of primary care, and I'm going to be reasonably direct here and say that I think there's, 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 there's quite a spectrum. Many women, and depending on where they live, are finding it really difficult to access a GP that they have a good therapeutic relationship with. Emeritus Professor Sue Pullen has been a GP for decades. Where did you study? To oh, be a I went to Otago, um, and it's a long time ago now. <laughs> yeah, I was at medical school in the 1970s. Were you, as a trainee GP, taught? about menopause? We certainly had a little bit on menopause. Um, it wasn't particularly emphasised. But in the past couple of years, she's helped redesign the curriculum so that now med students learn a lot more about women's health. They rotate round through medical wards, through surgical wards, and importantly in relation to menopause, they do obstetrics and gynaecology, and they do time and general practice. Interacting with patients, they're working under supervision, um, they're talking to women about menopausal symptoms, um, they're talking about many other things as well. What's the ratio of women to men studying oh, to be? Things have really changed now, um, for the, at least for the last 10 years, we've had more women than men um, going into medicine, somewhere between 65 and 70% of the current classes are women. And is it right for me to feel confident that young women growing up now are going to, it's going to be a better environment for them to be menopausal? I'm going to say yes. I think there has been tremendous advance in those clinical skills. Um, the young women should, shouldn't think that um, the catastrophe of menopause is going to, is going to be, be, like, yeah, be like the circle of doom over there. <laughs> It's all very well for us to talk with Paddy about menopause. We've got to really make him feel it. So you need Paddy to understand what menopause feels like. We can do it. How are we going to do that? Well, one of the big things is when you get hit by a massive hot flush. And for a lot of women, that's really a sweaty situation. Well, I think that's great because, like I said, I think I am the Nando source, the perimenopausal <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> So maybe we can yeah, try totally. and sort of up the Set temperature. Put him in a sauna. Suit. Put him in the sauna. Sauna suit, full makeup, full TV, shebang. I also suddenly started putting on weight in areas that I did not enjoy. So we need to make sure that his suits maybe a, a size or two, just a little just too small. Tight. Insomnia is a, a massive impact on women during premenopause. We need to keep him awake for a whole night before we put him in the sauna. Yeah, yeah. I can do that. I can just like give him a call every hour on the hour. Okay. Yes. So sleeplessness plus I think energy drinks. He needs to be like edgy. Wired. Kind of why you know, I think it sounds torturous. Well that's that's the point though, isn't it? Patty, it's, it's me. Hello. Hi Patty. Hi yeah, it's me, it's me, Karen. Hey um yeah, sorry to sorry to bother you. Right, so this menopause simulation is well and truly underway. I feel like crap because I had no sleep because of O'Leary's crazy phone calls. Patty, what's up? It's me again. Yeah, you're I'm in two small clothes, like I've put on weight. I've got Eli's pants on, for goodness sake, I can't even move. I've got a face full of makeup, like I've painted it on, uh, which feels gross already. Uh, now I've got to get in the sauna and start to have, you know, have some hot flushes. Before that, I'm going to drink some energy drink, which I hate and will make me feel anxious. So, here goes. starting to get a bead on now and um, sorry Eli I accidentally wiped this bloody makeup and uh, I don't know if they'll get this out of your little shirt. Show must go on. 70 degrees Celsius baby. If this ain't a hot flush I don't know what is. Why women wear makeup when they're going through this I do not know. That'll be one of my first questions when I get out of here. An opportunity to really bring it down is he would have to walk out of the sauna and all of a sudden 
cameras are there and he has to do his job. It's the boss. Hello? Yeah, Penny, just confirming you're ready for the live cross. Live cross. Tell us all about the sinkhole, who would come in 10? The sinkhole? In five. You bastards. I think that would give him empathy for some of the extracurricular signs of perimenopause that women face daily. Three, here he comes, two. Okay. Go, Petty. All right, here I am in... Here I am in Parnell, about to bring you the latest on the sinkhole that has emerged. There's very little information, but we're waiting to hear more from the council and obviously the other authorities that are involved with this very big sinkhole. Back to the studio. Shit, that was actually hard. Pass me the water. Happy World Menopause Day.